Elon shares some knowledge about autopilot. Model 3 leasing may be on its way. We have some rumors on Model 3's standard interior, and dog mode and sentry mode are being rolled out. This is Tesla Tidbits episode number 497 for February 20th, 2019. This show is sponsored by my supporter Richard at the sponsor tier level, and I thank him very much for his above and beyond support. We start the episode at ARK Invest's For Your Innovation podcast, where Elon was on the show discussing sort of the short to medium term future for Tesla. However, for me, one of the most interesting things discussed was exactly how autopilot data makes it to Tesla. I've always wondered if using autopilot on a particularly difficult stretch of road for autopilot made any difference, and now it seems my question is answered. And there are millions of corner cases. They're so obscure and weird, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, there's, there's different road markings, different rules in different countries, different expectations. You've got rain, snow, sleet, hail, you know, hurricanes, floods, fires, smoke, <laughs> dust. It's insane. I know. But we've got cars in almost all, really in all those environments. And so we, every time somebody intervenes, takes over from autopilot, it saves that information on and uploads it to our system. We, we don't know which car it was or how, what happened. You know, there's no individual attribution for the car. We just know that that intervention took place, and then we see what is required to fix that intervention. And, and we're really starting to get quite good at not even requiring human labeling. Basically, the, the person, say, drives the intersection. We know then and is thereby training autopilot what to do. So there you have it. Tesla gets useful information every time we disengage autopilot, assuming, of course, that we have data sharing turned on in the autopilot settings. So keep vigilant at the wheel and use autopilot wherever possible. And check out the rest of the show linked in the description for about a half hour of interesting Tesla talk with the head cheese himself. Next up, we head to Electric, where they've teased out some information about Model 3 leasing. An email was apparently sent to employees this week with the pertinent details of the program, confirming the leasing program would begin in the next couple of weeks. Tesla, however, while confirming the validity of the email, disagreed with its timing, offering this statement, quote, This is simply an internal document to ensure teams are prepared for when we eventually introduce a leasing option to customers. No decision has been made about when Model 3 leasing will be available, but it will definitely be after the dates outlined in this document. End quote. I believe the Tesla statement, as the earnings call comments made around the lease product indicated that leasing is a hit on Tesla's financial numbers, and in a Q1 where Elon isn't the most confident about a third straight profitable quarter, I find it extremely unlikely this happens before April at the earliest. I know there's plenty of you out there looking forward to this, and it looks like it's coming relatively soon, so stick around and I'll keep an eye out for you all, and I will let you know as soon as any news is available. We head over to Model 3 Owners Club now for some tasty tidbits on what the standard Model 3 interior might look like. One of the biggest highlights, and this may make me look particularly clairvoyant, is that the car will indeed include the glass roof, if not one that is exactly transparent. In my second bold prediction for 2019, I predicted we'd never see a metal roof on the car, and if the rumors prove true, what we'll get is a covering on the glass, which is then also covered up by a headliner. Other highlights from Trev's three-minute video is that many of the creature comforts of the car will obviously be not included. The non-premium interior will include textile seats, manual seats, with the exception of the up-and-down movement of the seats, and there will be no folding mirrors. Check out the full video at the link in the show description for all the details. Lastly, and the amount of news in front of this says a lot today, unless you are under a rock, you know that sentry mode and dog mode are being rolled out to the masses. What's new information, though, is that Dashcam gets a small upgrade with this update as well. Dashcam now takes video from the car's side cameras as well. Dog mode is nice for our furry friends and can be activated from the center screen when you're ready to leave the car for a location that may not be as friendly to your faithful Fido. It displays large, bold text on the center screen that your pup is just fine and is hanging out in climate-controlled comfort at your chosen temperature. Lastly, Sentry Mode is a new upgrade to Tesla's standard alarm and gives warnings to would-be criminals before they ever break into the car, hopefully saving the car from any damage if they know it's already being watched. Though, as you can see at the link in the description, it's got some kinks to be worked out still. That's it for today's show. As usual, a word about Foam Daddy will take us home. 
Foam Daddy is a nationwide company in the U.S. that sells and rents foam and snow machines. They're also proud to announce the arrival of the real snow machine. This allows anyone to produce real snow in any temperature. Check them out at FoamDaddy.com. My many thanks as well to our super patrons supporting the show at the $10 plus level at patreon.com slash Tesla Tidbits. They are John Waltower, Drew Schuyler, John Waller, Ryan Scarborough, Lee Sweet, William Henry Crew III, Dorian Steve Guberman, Bruno Kundici, Joey Boots, Ralph and Cheryl Waterhouse, Adam Raymer Brown, Megabot Photovoltaic Development, Todd Sullivan, Robert Healy, Mitch Long, Zortec LED Canada, Morvin Og, Blake Thompson, Raymond and Deborah Malkowitz, T Sportline, Michael Pastroni, Travis and Cheyenne Rush, Cookie UK, Chris Hovis, Craig Murphy, and Vicki Kirk. If you have feedback for me, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits and use the hashtag Ask Tesla Tidbits if you'd like your question to be considered for the show. I'll see everyone back here again on Friday. Until then, keep it charged and hit the road.